when we speak of the change that has come to the people of God because of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when we consider the alteration of expectations upon us from the old law of Moses to the new of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Especially when we teach these things to children, we see a lightening of the burden. We understand that in the old law, for instance, it was required that every person give the first fruits of their labor, that they should give a tithe, a tenth of all their profit, not just the profit, but of all the produce of their land, was to be given to God. And we understand that this requirement has passed away. There is no longer a requirement for us to give a tenth of all that we earn to God. We understand that under the old law, it was required that everyone should go, not once, not twice, but three times a year to the holy city of Jerusalem to observe the great festivals of Passover and Pentecost and the other that I forget. And we know that in these days there is no requirement for us to travel to a holy city. Sometimes we take pilgrimages, but we are allowed to worship God only in the place where we live. And we know that under the old law, it was required that on the eighth day after birth, every male child should go and give of his flesh, being circumcised in this way, being cut into the covenant of the law. And we consider that for us now, to be spared this and to go instead, all of us, through the font, is a lightening of the burden. We like this. The Jews had heavy burdens placed upon them, and we Christians, we do not have to do any of those obligations. I remember hearing it said by a young person who traveled to Israel and spent time at, in, in, in the south of that country with Jews and Muslims and Christians from that region. It was said that the Jews and the Muslims, if they were religious, they were deeply moral. They followed all of the obligations set upon them by their faith. The Christians, the Christians were loose and licentious. They did whatever they want. And it was even said to this young woman who traveled that it's okay. All I have to do is go for confession and the priest will forgive it and I'm good. I don't have to worry about that. Too many times. This is what we think about the Christian life. And even if we don't give license to ourselves to live in the sins of the flesh that those young people were talking about, even so, we cut ourselves a great deal of slack. We don't come to church. We don't keep the fast. We don't live a rule of prayer. We don't give of our goods to the poor. We don't devote ourselves to spiritual reading and study and holy action in our lives. We do what we want. We seek after wealth. We pursue pleasure. We take our ease. This is the great temptation of the American dream, after all. To believe this about the Christian faith, that it is easy with low expectations, is to make a mistake. 
the transition that we have made is not from a tithe to a hundredth of our income, although if we consider what most of us give to the church, it's closer to one hundredth than one tenth. It is not that we no longer have to go on pilgrimage so we can just sit around and do whatever we want. And it is not that we no longer are required to circumcise our sons and baptism is an easy out, the only thing that they owe to God in all their life, although some treat it in this way. What we see on this feast as the Lord himself, being born, comes to be circumcised. We see that he gives of himself. He submits himself to the requirements of the law. But this is not all that the Lord gives to us. Not to be crass. But the Lord does not only give his foreskin to the world. He gives himself in full. He goes even to the point of death and beyond to the resurrection. And those of us who then are baptized into his death and raised into his life, we are called not to give a pound of flesh, not to give only the tenth of our goods, not to give only the occasional yearly or the one lifetime pilgrimage. We are called to give our all to God. And Saint Basil is notable among the saints for saying that we who possess goods in this world, none of it is ours. God has given it all to us and it belongs to him. We hold it in trust. We exercise it on behalf of the entire creation called to sanctity. If we thought about our possessions in this way, we would no longer think that the lifting of the legal requirement of the tithe was a lightening of the burden. For all that we are, all that we possess, belongs to God in the new covenant. If we consider that we are no longer called to go on pilgrimage fine because we are made by the coming of Christ strangers and pilgrims in this world and all that we are all that we do every day and moment of our lives is a moment of travel of journey of progress of pilgrimage from this broken world into the kingdom of God and for the circumcision it is not only that small piece of flesh that is required of us now. We are called to give all that we are. Our entire being is offered to God. This is the significance of the baptism. We are baptized into his death and raised with him into newness of life. In all of these things, we are blessed that while it was never New Year's Day in the ancient world, it is now for us. This feast of the circumcision of the Lord, this feast of St. Basil, is as well the feast of the New Year. An occasion for transformation, for resolution, for a clear understanding of who and what we are and who and what we are called to be by Christ's presence in our midst. As we make our resolutions, as we step over the threshold of one year into the next, let us all remember that Christ does not give a small, partial gift to us in this world. He gives all that he is, embracing us, unite himself with us. And the call that comes to us this day is therefore that in gratitude, in thanksgiving, we offer to him ourselves and one another 
and our whole life to Him, to Christ our God. Please stand. We will continue the divine liturgy.